Even though they know right from wrong, some people treat others unjustly. What can unjust people expect to result from their misdeeds? God will not overlook injustice, but will punish the unjust. Here's today's keep in mind verse. Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of Judah and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have despised the law of the Lord, and have not kept his commandments, and their lies caused them to err, after the which their fathers have walked. Amos chapter 2 verse 4. Amos lived during an era of relative peace and prosperity. This prosperity led to an atmosphere of indulgent luxury, corrupt power, and moral depravity in Israel. Many had turned to the worship of idols and other gods. Some religious practices were still maintained, however, these had deteriorated into empty rituals. Israel's religion didn't have the intended impact on how they lived their lives. The book of Amos begins with the prophet's message of judgment to the nations surrounding Israel. Syria, Philistia, Tyre, Edom, Ammon, and Moab were each to be punished for their various sins. The Syrians were judged for being particularly barbaric in their dealings with conquered nations. Philistia treated its people as if they were a commodity, selling women, men, and children for nothing more than profit. Tyre was admonished for violating covenant agreements, and Edom for maintaining an angry rage against neighboring countries. In its unchecked desire to gain more land, Ammon had waged war on Gilead, and the Moabites desecrated a corpse, warranting God's judgment on their nation. It was not unusual for a prophet of God to declare his judgment on the idolatrous nations surrounding Israel and Judah. However, Amos' message to Israel also concerned the sins of God's people as well. Judah and Israel were also to be held accountable for their sin. Amos repeats the same prophetic formula for three transgressions of Israel and for four. This is an acknowledgement of God's patience toward their sin. Adding for four shows that God is at his limit and cannot restrain his punishment for their wrongdoing. Judah is condemned for rejecting the law of God and for idolatry. Amos announces that Judah's sins will not go unpunished. The Lord will send a fire on Judah and the palaces of Jerusalem. As Amos prophesied against the other nations like Tyre, Edom, Moab, and Judah, Israel must have savored and enjoyed hearing their neighbor's condemnation. Now it was their turn. Amos is not saying that one must be poor to be righteous, but he is acknowledging that fact that it is the wealthy who are using their excess of power corruptly in order to further oppress those who are already vulnerable. Amos is pointing out how the Israelites are devaluing human life. The Hebrew word kalal expresses the hideous act of desecrating that which belongs to God. It is making unholy that which is deemed holy. The Israelites are particularly accused of defiling the Lord's name through religious and social sins. Here's our lesson. The powerful and wealthy in Israel used legitimate political and legal systems to enrich themselves and hold down the less fortunate. A parallel to this type of behavior is the modern day practice of predatory lending in America. Predatory lending occurs when wealthy banking institutions provide loans under terms that are misleading or abusive. Often the loan terms make it impossible for a borrower to repay the loan or to make required payments. This results in the debtor losing land, money, or property to the bank. The poor and less educated are often the primary targets of such lending. Rather than taking advantage of the less fortunate, God calls us to minister to those who need help. As a nation and as the church, when it comes to social injustice, we often point the finger at others. Prayerfully, let's think of the ways our nation and our church contribute to social injustice. And let's commit to practicing justice in these areas of life as an individual. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus.